This is Immutable Opinion. I'm Asher Westrop Evans, inviting you to prove me wrong. I think we can all agree that 2020 has become the year of the DeFi mega hit. Despite a recent tumble at the time of this filming, the total amount of assets locked in DeFi has skyrocketed in the last calendar year from a humble $500 million to a hefty $8 billion when all is said and done. But that's just it. All is not said and done, and this market seems to have a long way left to move. So the question has officially been begged, is DeFi worth the investment? Well, let's start with a question that most who scoff at at best don't really know the answer to themselves, and at worst are looking to trick others into pretending they know the answer in order to get them into an industry they've already bought into. What is DeFi? At the highest level, DeFi, short for decentralized finance, is like a set of websites and apps where digital assets like ETH can be used to create new financial products like loans, index funds, derivatives, and many more juicy financial morsels. Put in even more simple terms, DeFi is like a switch of the script, where no longer do you have the bank deciding who takes out the loan and calling in the debts when you fail to make payments. Now, the users of the system finance your loans and take crypto, again, usually ETH, as the collateral. And the cherries on the pie, if you can't pay back the loan, or the price of your original ETH drops suddenly, the app will sell your original ETH and you may lose all your investment in its entirety. And this is where the problem starts. In general, these apps are criminally easy to use, providing real-time feedback, direct access, and cutting down on exhaustive paperwork. And my God, it is fun. Watching those numbers fly around makes you feel like a high stakes gambler, taking on the big guys and coming out on top. But as with all gold rushes, yes, even the digital ones, it is often the guys outselling the shovels, not the ones digging the holes that are making bank. DeFi apps are ridiculous easy to become a part of and are really great at charging fees. You pay these fees in the form of service fees or gas, quiet to make transactions on the Ethereum network. Additionally, apps generally tack on their own service fees. These fees are crafty and insidious. Fees are the silent killer. There's no use earning 5% interest on your ETH if you're out paying 6% in fees to transfer it in and out. Look, you may well end up making it rich quick, getting in and out before the system catches on, but in terms of sustainable wealth, there is still a long way to go. At this stage, most of DeFi is magic internet money, floating through an imaginary system, free from regulation, insurance, or security, as a dangerous house of cards, made of sand, built on a fault line, all ready to blow up in a volcano. But you know what? Prove me wrong. I'm Asher Westrop Evans, and this is Immutable Opinion.